Good morning, Kipsers. Welcome to another PE class with Mr. Flores. Buenos días, estudiantes, alumnos. Bienvenidos al salón de clase gimnasio físico. We're here for another day, another class. So without further ado, let's get started. Let me go on presentation mode. On today's agenda, let's get our field. On today's agenda, we have our social emotional learning lesson. I'm really, really excited about today's lesson. Following that, we're gonna talk about our eyes. We're gonna watch a video on our eyes. Then we're gonna do our workout slash exercise. As always, materials remain the same, a pencil, a paper, a towel, and a water bottle. Objectives, what we're gonna be focusing on today, what you should be able to do at the end of class is Kipsis will be to, Kips, I'm sorry, Kipsters will be able to define the importance of your eyes. Why are your eyes important? Two, Kipsters will be able to complete a set of exercises. And the big question about what we're going to be thinking about as we're learning and going through this segment and learning lesson is why are your eyes important? Why do we need our eyes, right? Why do we need our eyes? Let's move on. As always, we're going to start with our mantra. Remember, respect what's mine, respect what's not, respect our time. Respect all thought, work hard, try your best, take heart, shake the stress. Remember last week we learned about take heart, toma corazón. This week we're going to keep it juicy and we're going to do shake the stress. And in Spanish, that means despejate del stress. Again, despejate del stress. If you notice, shake the stress, despejate del stress. Stress in Spanish and English sound the same. They sound the same. So when two words in two different languages sound the same, like in Spanish and English, that's called the cognate. So it's called the cognate. I can give you another example real quick. Animal and in Spanish, it would be el animal are two cognates because they sound the same. Animal in English, el animal in Spanish. So... With that being said, shake the stress, let go of negative feelings, and don't worry about what others think. Bounce back, bounce back, and in parentheses, optimism, love, and perseverance. Those are the things that remind us about shaking the stress. Our values, our, our KIP values, optimism, love, and perseverance remind us about being able to shake the stress. Again, say with me, despejate del stress. Let's move on. As we focus in on shake the stress, remember, despejate del estrés. This is what we really mean by that. This is what Mr. Flores wants you to think about. When you hear that, do not give up. You don't want to give up. Remember, sometimes shaking the stress means me time, right? Doing things that help calm you and relax you, right? For example, Mr. Flores, I love, love going for walks. When I'm stressed out and things become super hard and there's a lot of things that I have to do, one of my favorite things is just to go out for a walk and look at different things outside and just get distracted so I'm not thinking about all the work I got to do or I don't think about what I got to do next week or what bills I got to pay. Mr. Flores just likes to relax. And one of my ways to relax is either going for a walk or doing some exercise. Third thing, when, when it comes to shaking the stress, despejate del estrés, focusing on things that have to get done to have fun later, right? Sometimes a lot of us, even maybe you friends will notice when you're doing work and you keep doing more work on top of the fact that you're doing work, it just makes things stressful, right? Focus in on doing one job and then go on to the next job or the next thing and then the next and the next, right? Don't try to do a lot of things at once. Do one thing well and then move on to the next thing. Do that well and then move on to the next thing. And then boom, sooner than later, you'll be done with everything you got to do. So remember, when you're shaking the stress, despejate del stress, it's important to do one thing at a time, do one thing well, and take your time. Don't rush through it. Do your best. Now, this is what I want friends to think about. When did you shake the stress? How did you feel knowing that you were trying your best, even if it felt really hard and stressful? All right, let's repeat that. When did you shake the stress? How did you feel? How did you feel knowing that you were trying your best, even if it felt very hard and stressful? Go ahead and draw a picture, write it out, send it to me. I want to know. Um, after you're done with that, we're going to move in right into our video about how your eyes work. Okay. So you're going to do your assignment, you're going to do that, send it to me because I want to know how did you 
Shake the stress, despeje el estrés. Despejate del estrés, perdón. Here we are, here's our video on the eyes. Remember, from our lesson, Kipsis will be able to describe the importance of the eyes, right? And that's the big question. Why are your eyes important? So as you're watching this, think about what Chloe and the Nerb are telling you about the importance of your eyes, all right? How the body works with Chloe and the Nerb. Eyeballs are the size of ping pong balls doesn't mean they make good ping pong balls. A nerd cannot be blamed for his love of scientific exploration, my dear Chloe. It is what makes him a nerd. Then can we use the eyeballs to explore how an eyeball works instead? We could, but these are kind of small and... Squished. One might say that. How about we take a look at him? Most excellent idea! Let's do! The eyeball is a beautiful machine with lots of different parts working together to let you see. Poets say the eyes are the window to the soul. Well, the window to the eyeball is the cornea, a dome of clear tissue up in front of the eye that focuses light as it passes through. Look at that beautiful green eye! And brown eye! And blue eye! The colorful part is called the iris, right? Yep, it's right behind the cornea. In the middle of the iris is a black circle called the pupil, an opening that lets light into the eye. The iris has muscles attached to it that change its size, making the pupil bigger and smaller to control how much light gets through. So the pupil gets smaller when there's a lot of light, and bigger when it's dimmer. Don't look now, but I think we're being watched. Mm. Ha! He blinked first. Which is a good thing. Blinking protects and moistens the eye. Good point! So what happens after the light has passed through the cornea and the pupil? The light passes through the lens. Like the lens in a camera? Precisely. The lens focuses the light onto the back of the eye, where seeing really starts to happen. Can the lens and the eye focus on stuff that's close and stuff that's far, like a camera lens would? It sure can. Let's head inside to see how. Last one through the pupils, rotten egg. The lens is held in place by a bunch of fibers which are attached to the ciliary muscle. Ciliary, ciliary, ciliary. The ciliary muscles change the shape of the lens to let the eye change its focus from something close by to something far away. What are you waiting for? Let's get focusing! To see something near, the ciliary muscle makes the lens thicker. To see something far, the ciliary muscle makes the lens thinner. From the lens, we travel to the retina, the back wall of the eyeball. Right, because the lens focuses the light onto the retina. The retina has millions of light-sensitive cells called rods and cones. About 120 million rods and 7 million cones in each eye. Whoa, that's a lot of rods and cones. What's the difference between them? It's the difference between black and white and color. Yeah. The rods see in black, white, and shades of gray and help us see the shape and form of a thing. Rods also help us see in the dark. And the cones see color? Cones are sensitive to one of three colors, red, green, or blue. Together they let us see millions of colors. But cones need more light than rods to work with. Hey, what's this thing behind the retina? Hey, no bouncing on the optic nerve. It carries messages to the brain about what you're seeing. The rods and cones change the colors and shapes you see into millions of nerve messages. Then, those messages are carried along the optic nerve to the brain, 
It's like your eye is sending the brain a report on what you're seeing. Then your brain translates the report into cat, apple, or bicycle. Or a ping pong ball. Huh? Keep your eye on the ball there, nerb. Oh, <laughs> it's on. All right, boys and girls. So with that, we learned a little bit more, again, why it is important, why your eyes are important, right? So remember, our big objectives for the first, or at the beginning of the class was, why are your eyes important? And that was also our big questions. Now you friends know why your eyes are important. You learned about all the great and amazing things our eyes do for us. And now we're going to move on to the second part of our objective. And that is... Let's complete a set of exercises. So get cozy, get comfy, get some water. I will see you friends in a sec.